Hello, uh, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the phonology of signed languages and give you some examples. Um, uh, the phonology of signed languages is actually uh, quite similar to the phonology of spoken languages in certain ways. Uh, for example, just like in spoken languages, um, a phoneme bears no meaning all by itself. However, changing one phoneme can change the meaning of a morpheme or a word. And the same is true in sign languages. We generally speak about sign language phonology in broad categories uh, called parameters. There are many more uh, examples of phonemes in signed languages, but I will stick to that because it's, uh, it's the easiest analogy to draw between signed and spoken languages. So, one um, parameter of a sign is movement. And so, as I said, movement itself bears no meaning, uh, but contributes to uh, the creation of the sign, which does bear meaning. For example, the sign school. Okay. Um, if I change only the movement, uh, I change the meaning of the sign to a completely different sign. For example, the, changing the movement from up and down to this circular movement changes the sign from school to paper. Now, circular movement has no meaning. Another example, another parameter is direction. So again, if I start with the sign paper and I'm using this direction of the circular movement. If I change the direction only, I now have the verb to clean. Uh, another parameter is repetition. Uh, this is where we get what we call in signed languages noun verb pairs. Uh, one classic example is the difference between sit. And if I change repetition as a phoneme characteristic, I get chair. Another parameter is hand shape. Uh, if I change only the hand shape, I go from this hand shape and I sign mother and I change to this hand shape and I sign imbibe to drink alcohol. Uh, once again, this hand shape, other than the number five, bears no meaning nor does this handshape, other than it also looks a lot like the letter A. Um, placement is another example. If I change the placement, I have the sign for mother. If I change only placement, which is a phoneme and bears no meaning by itself, the sign becomes father. Um, and last example is palm orientation. Um, if I sign children, with my palm facing the floor is quite different from changing palm orientation to palm up and sign things. Um, there are other examples of uh, what you might call a, a, a phonetic phonological envelope um, uh, in handshape even uh, for manual the manual alphabet. Um, good example is um, the letter B. Um, no, the letter E. If the letter E is preceded by the letter B, it tends to look more open as opposed to E. If I sign um, Rube, it doesn't close because the, of the preceding letter B. Um, another example is um, if I were to fingerspell name. I don't know why I would because there's a sign for it, but uh, if I were to fingerspell name, that closes it up because the M preceded the E. Um, another example is the letter N. If I fingerspell uh, the month of June, this is probably the most pronounced example, June. These two let fingers tend to stay raised. That only happens when the letter E is the last letter and is preceded by an N, June. Um, 
another example of what you might call the envelope, the co-articulation effects of, of what happens before or after um, is mother and father tend to be um, expressed right in the middle, mother and father. However, in the term mother-father deaf, which is uh, American Sign Language expression to refer to someone whose parents are deaf and the person himself is not, um, the sign, because the second sign, the third sign, starts on this side of the head, mother stays in the middle, father is moved to the side, which otherwise would not be um, a correct articulation of that sign, if you will. It would look a lot more like one-handed sign for deer, quite frankly. Mother, father, deaf, as opposed to parents, which stays to the midline. That's um, some examples of uh, the phonology of signed languages, and I hope you uh, uh, would agree uh, that there are a lot of similarities between the phonological rules of a spoken language and the phonological rules of a signed language.